Multiprocessing allows us to fully harness the power of multiple cores in our CPUs to dramatically speed up code. In contrast to multi-threading, multiprocessing in Python is not affected by the global interpreter lock, which means that we can achieve true parallelism. This is especially useful for CPU-bound applications. I've already covered multi-threading in a previous video, and I've also gone through the differences between parallelism and concurrency. Make sure you check it out, I'll link it up here. Today, we'll be looking at how to implement multiprocessing in Python, and I'll also go through some of the most important features of the multiprocessing module, so make sure you stick around till the end. So the first thing we'll look at is how to parallelize a simple serial task. We have this API worker function that simulates a CPU intensive task. It's a simple nested for loop where we multiply two numbers and then add them to a total. We also have a dictionary here that simply returns the task as the as the key and the total as the value. And the first thing to note here is that we need the if name main whenever we're using the multiprocessing module in Python. Now I'm timing this and I'm running API worker twice to simulate uh, some CPU uh, intensive operation. I've already run this and it takes 7.37 seconds on my computer. Now let's see how we can speed this up uh, by multi-processing. So I'll just create uh, a new process and I will say target is the actual function you want to run and then we need to also give arguments and these are done in parentheses and remember also the comma after. So that's task one. And then we have also process two that executes task two. So to actually run the processes, we simply say uh, proc one dot start and proc two dot start. And this will then uh, start the processes. Now we also need the joins and these are needed because what the join does is it suspends the program. So it so the program waits at this point and then only continues after this once the two processes are done with their tasks. So the, the reason we need this is that if we didn't have them, then the, then the program might uh, just go through this and exit before the processes actually finished uh, their work. So we, we have the joins to ensure that the processes complete the tasks we assigned them before actually exiting the main program. Now I'll run this and let's see the speed up. Okay, that's 3.47 seconds. So it's actually right about uh, twice as fast, which is awesome. So before moving on, I want to show you guys that it's possible to do this also in a, in a loop. So instead of having to create the processes manually, you can have do something like this, where you are, um, so you use the multiprocessing.cpu count function to get the number of cores in your CPU. And that's usually a good indicator for how many processes you need. So it would be, you know, one process per core. And once you have that, you have a loop here that creates uh, the processes and appends them to a list and then also call start on the processes. And then afterwards, you simply iterate the list and call uh, join on, every, on each one of the processes. So you might have noticed from the previous example that we weren't actually able to get the results from the computation. So for that, we need to use a data structure that allows us to share objects amongst different processes. For that, there are two in Python. There's the queue and the pipe. In this example, we'll be looking at the queue. I've imported it from the multiprocessing module. So let's begin by giving uh, an extra parameter to the API worker. And uh, when you're returning, uh, we simply say queue.put like that. And this actually also needs to be changed to a colon. So once that's been done, we create a queue down here and we pass it as an argument like that. Um, once that has been done, we can also uh, retrieve the values by saying queue.get. Uh, so let me run this and let's see. So as you can see, we get the, the result for task one and the result for task two. So the previous example was still a bit cumbersome and clunky because we needed to manually create the processes and also make sure to store the results in a queue object before before accessing them. So in Python, we have something called a pool object that allows us to really streamline and simplify this process of creating processes and also accessing the values and so on and so forth. So to just illustrate how this is done, uh, let's just get the number of uh, the number of processes and then we create a, uh, a pool object using the pool method like that and then processes we just give the number of processes and to and then we call map um, which is responsible for assigning uh, the work 
and then we just you know give the, the basically uh, the two tasks that we wish to to execute and we can so one thing and then we also need to call pool.close before calling pool.join now the first thing to note here is that we are actually able to uh, get the results directly from the pool.map so we don't need to use uh, the queue object or a pipe or any of that and we can also just you know simply print the result like that now one more thing that's important here is that this map object uh, basically assigns work to the different processes. So imagine that, you know, in this case, we only have two tasks, right? But imagine that you have a hundred or a thousand tasks and you have like four processes, the map object will be responsible for equally dividing up the tasks so that every process gets an equal amount of work. Um, and this is, you know, like a very convenient way to do it. If we didn't use map, you'd have to do this, you know, manually, you'd have to, you know, chunk up, uh, chunk up the, 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 the work. Now, if we, if we run this, we you should be able to see that it gives us basically you know the same uh, the same speed up as before yeah so like 3.5 seconds and also we have task one and task two stored in the results so the next thing i want to talk about is uh locks and race conditions in parallel and concurrent computing a race condition occurs when you have two processes trying to access a shared resource or a shared object uh, at the same time. So the problem occurs because you because the order of execution uh, can actually affect the results and mess up the results. So the program doesn't actually behave as expected. This is a bit similar to how, you know, imagine that you have multiple people editing a document at the same time without actually having a plan for what to do. Uh, you can imagine how that might, you know, mess up uh, the end result. So to solve this, we have something called locks, which gives a process exclusive access to, to a shared uh, object. So once, you know, a process acquires a lock on an object, only that process and no other process can modify that object. Once the process is done interacting with that object, it releases the lock, which allows other processes to modify and access that object. Now, to motivate this, I wanted to, you know, have more of a real life example. So we have this uh, very interesting bank account example where we have a bank account with uh, an initial balance uh, and a deposit function that deposits some amount to that value. Uh, the rest of the of the code is the same uh, apart from one little thing. Uh, so we have this uh, value here. Um, so what you have is uh, in, in, in processes, so processes, they have, you know, their own, uh, so they have basically private memory spaces, which means that if you create an object in one process, it's not visible in another process. So to solve that, you need to have the value or like an array from the multiprocessing module that allows uh, you to create um, a shared object that all processes across the system can access and modify. Um, so it's it's a bit similar to it's not too complicated. You just create a value and then you give it you know the type. This is you know just to indicate that it's a float uh, and balance. And then you know whenever you're accessing this, you just say balance dot value in all the different places. So in this particular example, we are starting with a with an initial balance of a thousand dollars, and then we have two processes. Each of them adds a hundred dollars. So at the end of this example, the final balance should be two uh, twelve hundred dollars. Now before I just want to show you guys. Uh, what actually happens uh, in this example uh, before we are, you know, if we're, if we're not using any locks, right? So I'll just run this and you'll notice that it's actually giving us, so this goes to the, the results. So we have depositing 100, depositing 100. The new balance after depositing is 1100. New balance after depositing is 1100. And the final balance is 1100. What's happening here is that the first process is adding $100, which leads to a final balance of, of 1100. But at the same time, the second process is trying to add $100. Uh, but it doesn't see, so the changes from the first process, they don't actually propagate back. So they're not updated uh, in the value. So the second process is also adding 100 to 1000. Uh, instead of adding 100 to 1100. So that's why, you know, the final balance is 1100 and not 1200. Solving this is actually quite simple. We just need to create a, a lock. So we say multiprocessing.lock and then we pass it as, as an argument uh, both places like that. And, and then here we say lock.acquire and here down here we say lock.release so basically what's in between lock.acquire and lock.release will ever only be executed by a single process at any time 
Uh, another way to do this is to have this, uh, so use the context manager and say uh, with lock and then just like that and then just comment out these two, this would also work. So let's run this and see, you'll notice that it, the value is now correctly uh, 1200. So I just want to show you guys what happens if we don't use this value here. So if self.balance is equal to balance, uh, if that's the code, I've just uh, rerun uh, the, the code and you'll notice that the first process deposits $100 and the new balance is 1100. The second one does the same. And the final balance is a thousand. So what's happening here is that this balance here is uh, is not shared across the processes. So every process has its own private memory uh, space, which means that every process has its own balance, uh, which means that process one is adding, you know, 100 to its balance. Process two is adding it to its own balance. And the final process, uh, you know, is also, you know, the main process the Python program is running uh, is, is basically also, you know, a balance in itself. So, yeah. This is just to show you guys uh, the importance of using something something like that in a multiprocessing uh, application. This video concludes the mini series I had on multiprocessing and multi-threading in Python. Uh, please let me know if you if you want more videos on multiprocessing or multi-threading, or if there's something specific you want me to look at. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like the video, and if you have any questions, uh, drop them in the comments below. And see you guys in the next one.